Now, I've come up with the perfect spell to make this film better than it needs to be. Now, where the bloody hell is my wand gone? That bloody dog. Hey, dog! Hey guys, it's Beef Doog, and I'm coming at you today with the 4K Blu-ray review of Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. And I'm here to show you, is it worth your money? Because as always, I've spent mine and burnt it, thrown it away, so you don't have to spend yours. Directed by David Yates, written by J.K. Rowling. Now, the script by J.K. Rowling makes this the worst Harry Potter film in the series. And what I mean by that is, every other Harry Potter film was set and kept in one place with a straightforward plot. All the characters were there, put to good use, had great character development. The first Fantastic Beasts had this. This Fantastic Beasts takes so many subplots, so many places, and so many characters with not so much character development, crams it all into one. The film itself takes itself very seriously on the Harry Potter scale. It has creative, creatures that look fantastic, fantastic spells that look fantastic. But the problem is, is that what is given with the script, there's so much in there, it's nothing more than organic people telling you the plot. There's nothing wrong with people like Johnny Depp as Grindelwald. He does the part well. There's nothing wrong with... Jude Law as Alvis Dumbledore, he does the part well. It is what is given in the script. The opening was fantastic, I'll give them that. Grindelwald escape, following up from the first Fantastic Beasts, he was given plenty to do there, it made him look strong. From that point forward, it is literally all thrown in there all the characters come from different places, it's set until they finally, at some point in the film, come to meet one another. And then it is that bad. It all centers around this boy, Credence. All of you that will have seen the first Fantastic Beast will know who Credence is. He is an important character and the whole film is about the development around this character and Grindelwald's future succession to his evil plots. It centers around Credence and Credence goes around. The film doesn't give much away. It is, it is just about who am I? Where am I from? And it gets to a point where they all stand in a crypt and it, they just all stand around each other, not sure why they're there, but everyone is like, right, this is the plot. This is what happens. The audience pay attention. There's a family tree involved. There's no background to any of this. This is us just throwing a plot at you. Subplot, subplot. This is how it comes together. Please listen. Now, I did not get any of this when I went to see it in the cinema. I went into the cinema, I watched the film and came out and I could not even tell you what was going on. It was just a bunch of good guys and bad guys and then the, sp the spoiler at the end, which I'm not going to give away. I had to go and watch the first Fantastic Beast on Blu-ray and then watch this again on Blu-ray, play it, rewind it, play it, rewind it. I paid attention to this point to try and understand because the continuation of the next two Fantastic Beast films relies on you to absorb this plot line and understand it. And 
I still struggled. I just got the bare bones of the plot. It's that complicated. The script is that bad. This film acts like it's epic, but it's not. It looks like Harry Potter film. It looks epic. It acts like it's epic. It's got all the wizardry and things there, but you can see through it. It's got storylines that were finished in the first film and then written badly into the second film and picked up where it didn't need to be. They obliterated Jacob's memory in the first film and then just turns up on Newt's door and Queen is enchanted in with a love spell and he's there and it's like, oh, it didn't work. But yet he went and into that magical reign in the first film like the whole city and everyone else got their memory wiped and it just didn't make sense. This film lacks focus. It needs focus. It could have been shot and taken and many times, a lot of it could have been cut out and it could have been something with more focus, but isn't. The Crimes of Grindelwald. This film isn't really about his crimes or anything like that. With the poor subplot that's given to him, he just stands around and gives people orders and his like, credence needs to come to me. So it doesn't really show what he's capable of. It doesn't have any conflict as the main villain. It's more, the, the positive side to it is, it shows you how Grindelwald gathers his followers to his cause because it's about the subdivision of a society. We all know that there's Mughals, non-magics, and there's the wizarding witch society that have lived in peace and harmony for a hundred years. Grindelwald wants to change that. His vision is to take over the non-magics and basically rule. This shows you the upbringing of how he gains his followers. A lot different to how Voldemort was set up, because Voldemort already had his name. People did not even speak Lord Voldemort's name. That's what I meant earlier, that some characters do well with the character, it's just the script that they're given. There is, if anyone remembers from the second Harry Potter film, there's Lord Voldemort snake, Nagini, that gets its head taken off. Well, that snake is an Easter egg in this film that you get to see the, the human version, which is a lady that Credence comes to develop a, a relationship with, yet the character has no development, no one cares about her, She's very forgetful as a character. She's been given a blood curse, which is explained in this film, that eventually she'll become the snake that she turns into, and then down the line, Lord Voldemort's pet and gets beheaded. Those are the kind of poor characters that are just thrown in there. The, slug, the subplot, one of the subplots that no one cares about. So, so guys, it is that time to find out what the audience think of this and the critics. So, hmm, IMDB have given it a 6.7 out of 10. So it's not up there on the great Harry Potter level. It is a little bit itching down there. Again, a meta score of 52. So the audience is a bit, mm. One comment I'd like to read out here. Telling an audience this stuff is important is one thing. Making them actually feel that it is the magical part is another. Moving on, Rotten Tomatoes. The tomato meter, cringe, has given it 37%. The audience score, 57%. So guys, as you know, this film has taken a blow and I'm not really happy about that. I bought this Blu-ray 
because it is part of the Harry Potter collection, Fantastic Beasts, Harry Potter, and it belongs in my collection. If it belongs in your collection, that's for you to decide based on this review. Let's have a look at the box and see what you get for your money's worth. So guys, this was the full 25 pounds, okay? Now, I'm just gonna sh have a look at the front. It, it's got, the, the cover does what the film does. It gets all the characters and crams it all onto the front. There's a nice detailed synopsis on the back with pictures. I like a very detailed cover, makes it attractive. It explains the specifications in which the film was shot. This film has been upscaled to 2160p. It was not shot in native 4K. Looking at the front again, same on the front, same on the back. Let's have a look inside where the magic happens. Ooh. Now, in here, you get, for your money's worth, you get the download code, digital download. The main case here is the original copied Blu-ray disc. On the inside, you get the special features on the special features Blu-ray disc, which you don't get if you were to just rent the film on an online service. Some people buy the Blu-rays for these. And then you've got the main disc here, the 4K, Blu-ray content. So, let's wrap it up. It's that time where I give this film a rating based on my rating system. Now, if the film was absolute trash and you don't need to see it, just don't even look at the cover. The film is dog poop. If the film is not that great, you could possibly miss it, depending on what it is in your interest. Then it's having its doog day if the film is average you could look at it it's is it worth your time you decide then it's the doog in the middle if the film is great and you can't miss it you need to go see this then we say it's a doogie treat um. if the film is unmissable and you need it in your collection then we say that the film is going in doogie style Excuse me. So, based on the bad plot, that it's got everything crammed into it, there are a few good aspects to this film. If you're a Harry Potter fan, I do believe you'll enjoy the film to a certain degree, but you will be kind of or mostly disappointed once you've seen it. Hopefully, and I'm saying this now, uh, read also that it's going to take not the normal two years for the next film to come out in the Fantastic Beast series. They're pulling it back and taking extra time based on user reviews to get it up to that Harry Potter quality. So based on all that information collated, is this worth your time? Is it worth your money? I'm afraid that we have to give this film its doog day so youtubers if you enjoyed this video go down there and hit that like button that'll help me out quite a lot yes it will then what i want you to do if you will kindly scroll on over down there yeah yeah hit that subscribe button yeah right there and if you want notifications in the future you just go down there and hit that bell guys i'm beef duke and I just want you to do one thing. I want you to go ahead and keep it real.